Why does smoke come out of the manholes in New York? You know, right? In the typical American movie scene, there are these smoking manholes. But what is the scientific explanation behind this phenomenon? And then, why does it seem to occur exclusively in New York and not, for instance, in Turin, Paris or Palermo? Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers. We are Italians. It was manually translated into English, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Well, first and foremost, we need to clarify two things. Firstly, what we see coming up out of the ground is actually water vapor. Trivial, I know, but it should be said. Two, this steam originates from a man-made system and made by one man in particular, a hydraulic engineer from Lockport by the name of Birdsill Holly, who in the year 1877 came up with a genuinely ingenious technique for heating cities, heating them with steam. It is referred to as district heating. You'll certainly have heard about it. Today, of course, it is used in numerous other cities. Well, up until that point, steam boilers had been quite costly. They were expensive and large, and their heating capacity was limited to smaller rooms only. For an entire apartment, a massive boiler would have been required. And then, where could you put it? Holly had a brilliant idea. His plan was to position it directly outside his home and connect it through pipes that passed under the pavement and through the walls of the house. So, once filled with the steam produced by the boiler, these pipes would heat the entire building. The experiment was a tremendous success, and our beloved hydraulic engineer spent the long winter warm and snug. Now, imagine taking this simple idea and recreating it on a larger scale extending it from a solitary house to all the residences on the street and subsequently to all the dwellings in the entire neighborhood. This is what transpired, first in Lockport and subsequently in New York, which made the decision to adopt the same system in 1881. It was a system that proved so effective that it is still utilized today. Currently, in fact, scattered throughout Manhattan, there are multiple district heating plants that supply steam to over 1,500 buildings. Envision them as enormous boilers where, through the combustion of predominantly fossil fuels, frequently methane gas, large quantities of water are heated and subsequently transformed into vapor. From this point, the steam is channeled through a system of pipes and sent around the neighborhoods. The pipes are primarily of two types. The supply pipes, responsible for conveying hot steam from the heating plants to the city districts, and the return pipes, which are utilized to transport the steam back from the houses to the heating plants so that it can be reused. The problem is that almost 150 years have passed since the first pipes were installed and over time they have started to deteriorate to crack with the consequent release of steam which obviously rises to the surface and ends up in the street and emerges from our iconic New York City manholes. And there it is, the enigmatic steam emanating from the manholes of New York explained. It's all a matter of maintenance. At this point, the natural question to ask is, why the hell don't they fix them? I mean, it's simple, right? Oh no, it is not simple. It's one thing to say it, but quite another to do it. It's complex from a technical standpoint, and now I'll briefly explain why. Despite the existence of some access points that enable the underground pipes to be reached, there are not enough of these access points for a network that spans over 150 kilometers. In reality, for the majority of their length, these enormous pipes are buried deep underground, hidden from view, and are therefore difficult to reach. The only solution is to dig, but this obviously requires a lot of time, great efforts both in terms of money and productivity, and often it's not worth it. Without even taking into consideration the fact that repairing a pipe during the winter season could potentially result in entire neighborhoods being left without heating. However, that's not all. In New York, they also use steam to sterilize hospital equipment, to clean hotel rooms, to wash dishes in restaurant kitchens, and to perform many other tasks. For these reasons, the maintenance process is proceeding very slowly and much more emphasis has been placed on containing the problem rather than solving it at its source. And it is in this regard that the iconic white and orange columns scattered throughout Manhattan come into play. 
They are used to direct steam leaks and release them outside in order to prevent damage caused by underground pressure. Moreover, these vents discharge at a specific elevation above the level of the street to avoid scalding pedestrians with hot steam and, naturally, to minimize the risk of road accidents resulting from impaired visibility. Another very interesting aspect, and this is really a curious thing, the district steam heating system in New York, in addition to modifying the underground of the city, has in a certain way influenced or conditioned the city's skyline. Let me explain. Steam weighs less than air, so it rises. Now imagine being a New York architect from the early 20th century, at a time when the city is experiencing strong expansion and we finally realize that we can build all the buildings we want, as tall as we want, without having to worry about installing stoves, heaters, fireplaces, chimneys and so on. Where am I going with this? Today it may seem trivial, but before then it was not possible to build too high, because heating the upper floors was technically complex, and every apartment would have needed its own fireplace, its own heater. Instead, using steam, simple pipes were sufficient to enable the steam to rise and, as a result, heat even the apartments situated at the higher levels. In brief, without district heating, skyscrapers such as the Empire State Building or the Chrysler Building would likely not exist or would have a significantly different appearance. A final point, however, if this blessed district heating was indeed so brilliant, why didn't we implement it in Italy as well? Why don't manholes smoke in Italy? Well, to be honest, district heating does actually exist in Italy and in a significant way. And even our manholes occasionally do let off steam. Look at these images. And this is not New York. This is Turin. In this instance, it is a broken district heating pipe that has resulted in a New York City type phenomenon. There it is. And Turin is not the only city to have it. District heating is in wide use all over the world, and implementing it even appears to be a rapidly growing trend. So why is it rarer to see these outbursts of steam in other cities? I mean, in the collective imagination, they are exclusively associated with New York. Why not in other cities? Firstly, because in other cities the facilities are more modern and then they are designed to have more access points, and so their maintenance is less complex. Also, the US, if we're being completely honest, is actually full of cities with smoking manholes. Just think of Boston, Philadelphia, Detroit, San Francisco, and numerous other cities. Although it must be said that being one of the oldest and largest systems in the world, it is evident that in New York City, the phenomenon is significantly more noticeable than in other places. Ah, it's amazing, you know, how in an image that we've had right before our eyes for years, we can sometimes find something new, something that has a huge story behind it, which maybe we were previously unaware of. That is to say, the story behind New York's smoking manholes is the story of a city's heating system. Fantastic. Dear viewers, thank you so much for watching this video until the end. See you again next time, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science. Ciao!